Are you wanting to franchise your business? In our discussion today, we'll be talking about how to franchise your business and is your business ready to be a franchise business? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Franchising with FASA. Joining us today, Robin has experience in turning 50 businesses into franchise brands. Robin has also revived struggling business, turning them into profitable businesses. From start to completion, Robin can advise you every step of the way. Franchise in a Box has developed processes for, coordinate, um, for coordinated strategic planning, legal, as well as operations, marketing, and has rolled out services all under one roof. So hello and welcome to everyone today for joining us. Thank you for watching this. If you have any comments, let us know, ask questions. Also give us a shout out, let us know where you're from. And then as a reminder to share this with anyone you think is in a growing business. Perhaps you know someone who's got a business and it's growing and it's thriving and maybe they want to expand their business and turn it into a franchise business. Or maybe you know someone who's having a hard time in their business and they just need a little bit of inspiration. There's always something to learn from these talks that we're having today. So in a minute, in a moment, I'm going to be um, chatting with you with you and Robin about franchising your business and challenges that you could face. So hello, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome back. Just to remind you once again to please hit the like and share button. Share this with anyone you may think is interested in franchising their business. Hello to you Robin and how are you today? Hi, Romani. Very well. Good, nice good, and good. cold and cool here, so it's great. We're having a lovely day of no wind, thank goodness, because as you know, it has been uh, there's been a major fire in Cape Town destroying one of our major universities. A lot of damage has been done to historical sites at present, so very sad. I'm very happy to see there's no wind today, so hopefully it can help the firefighters. Eva saying good morning, it's afternoon here. Uh, always something to learn and she's sitting in the Philippines at the moment. So good morning everyone and let's get started. So Robin, a few weeks ago you and I were chatting about business in general and franchising businesses and some of the uh, some franchisors experience that their franchisees are not turning their businesses into profitable businesses. So when it comes to franchising your business, a lot of people try and do their own stuff. You know, it's always, we have this mentality of doing it yourself because it's going to save you money. But in the long term, it can cause you a hell of a lot of money more. So when it comes to franchising your business, what is your uh what 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 advice would you give as as a starting point i think the starting point is if you're really interested in franchising your business and you think you have a business get it evaluated by somebody professional even if you want to do this stuff yourself you'll find that uh, speaking to somebody else that's been through the mall that knows all the pitfalls they can actually help you Especially with your documentation, if you start writing your documents, um, we follow all the uh, all the tidbits that we get from FASA or whatever. I've got a case, for example, now where uh, one of my franchisors that's been in franchising for the last 10 years has written his own document. And when I evaluate the document, I certainly would not buy his franchise at this point. Um, there's a lot of stuff that has to go into your documentation. So make sure that you're aware and know it, but get somebody professionally to do it properly. That money that you're saving, it could be between a hundred and whatever thousand rand it is, you, it's going to cost you in the long run when you're actually now sitting with a problem franchisee, you either have to get rid of the franchisee or there's something in the contract that they can just cancel. There's a lot of things that you're not aware of, uh, the man in the street. But being working in it more than 20 years and doing, well, it's actually 75 brands now, but doing all these brands, you actually start realizing what is the tricks of the trade. There's little things that 
sounds like nothing, but it can become quite big. So it's very important to, to make sure that your starting point is right. Uh, professionally, I'm actually a turnaround specialist, and that's what I've been doing most of my life. And franchising is nothing different. It is a turnaround strategy. What you do, and when I do turnarounds as well, I make all the directors literally start their documentation from scratch. Because if you write something down, it comes into your head and you actually look, think, look and think a lot more about what you're doing. And never think that you're too old to learn. You will learn. You might know everything. You might have been in franchising for 30 years and you think you know everything. There is still stuff that needs to be checked. So once again, start at the basics. Documentation. Get somebody to do it rather than doing it yourself. It's, it's time consuming. It's a lengthy process. And there's a lot of questions that gets asked. And uh, for example, one franchisee, a really nice franchise, but there's a lot to change and a lot to introduce to make it even better. Because my point is, if you have a business and you want to set it up, make sure that you're better than most people are in the market. And that's my job. My job is to help you uh, guide yourself into a successful business. And often with the franchisees, why would your franchisee fail? Why is he not making money? I get asked that question so many times. And the bottom line is it comes down to training. If you don't train your franchisees, if you don't have a consistent program, even a follow-up training, if you don't train at least one every, once every three months, you are going to have those issues. So once again, Training documentation, get to know how to train your, uh, the franchisee. You might think uh, they, it would be easy. Okay, just do this and that and that. It doesn't work like that. People are very simplistic. They need to be shown the most simple stuff to be able to do the complex stuff. And you know, this is what I'm hearing and listening to you. I, you know, I agree with you. You know, it may cost you a thousand rand or eight, I don't know what the costs are for having a consultation these days, but it's more worth it. Take your business, take it to someone, just brainstorm it. Even if it's an hour of your time, it's worth that money spent. I mean, I was reading in an article yesterday about, oh no, it was one of my colleagues. They posted on Facebook about these two guys who went to the Dragon's Den and they now what um, um, were selling a glove that goes with a woman's menstruation, you know, to, and I mean, it's like a glove that's supposed to be for, for the, and, and it's like looking at this and looking at it from, and these were guys that, that created this business and went out and got all this funding because now they look like they're saving a woman's, you know, try, helping, whereas us women are looking at this and saying, hang on a moment, what did you get wrong there, you know? So having that discussion with somebody who is a professional in their field or perhaps somebody that knows or just somebody that's, that's got a little bit of experience working with different brands and launching businesses into the market space. They can give you the pitfalls, they can give you the understanding of, of all the things that you need to know about in terms of, of growing that business and getting it kick-started. And more often than not, we're trying to do things alone, but being able to brainstorm and then just having that extra person saying, but hang on a minute, have you looked at it from this perspective? Have you thought about this? Have you considered what's going to happen if this and this and this doesn't work out? You know, the franchise I'm beginning to learn, especially in the disclosure document, my understanding is that disclosure is a blueprint, isn't it? It's a blueprint of your business. Um, just, just confirm this with me, uh, uh, um, Robert. Absolutely. Is that disclosure? Yeah, it's a it is um, giving every single aspect of your business and it's the most important document for anybody that's looking to buy into a business that they need to, 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 to read up on. Is that correct? That's correct. And that disclosure document is, is actually a working document for yourself. Now, FASA requires that you resubmit on a yearly basis your updated documents. 
And I think that's quite imperative that you actually follow that truth because your document a year ago might just be outdated, that you've changed a few things, you need to update those things. And that's what you need to let your clients also know. And even your current franchisees, whenever you do major updates and you do changes in your disclosure, revisit that with your actual franchisees because it's brand building. Your franchisee then understands what you're really up to and doing, and you know what you're doing. I just want to get uh, come back to one thing, Romani. The, Getting the consultation from somebody professionally is very important. And that's what I realized in my business. And that's why I actually offer one hour free consultation to give you that head start. Am I ready? Am I not? What can I do? How can I do it? That's, that's, so I offer that service to people as well. And it's almost like you're walking away, okay, going with additional information that you can go and improve on exactly. So when you spot the challenges or you spot or you say, okay, well, you've got a bit of a weakness in that area, you can go away and redraft it and come back for another session. So, you know, even, and, and, and you know, listening to you about the disclosure document, I mean, even in this process, what I found in my own personal experience is that my business has evolved and changed over the years. And, and, and I, it's almost like I'm evolving and changing as my customers are evolving, as my customer needs are evolving, as also looking to factoring future trends. So just the other day, and and and, and I'm glad we're talking about this because just the other day I was sitting there rewriting the blueprint, rewriting the blueprint of my business. Um, and, and in that, it's almost like I'm re rediscovering things for myself, you know, reminding myself, but hang on a moment. You know, maybe I need to focus in this area of my marketing a little bit more because I've kind of not, you know, it's almost like I'm revisiting my customer needs. I'm revisiting my where my business is going and revisiting the products that I'm offering so that I can make them better for, for, for tomorrow's business and tomorrow's customers. You know, I always say a franchise, if it doesn't evolve into a, uh, a sort of a different business but you, your offerings change everything changes but the bottom line is you need to keep up with trends and that's quite important and it comes back to your disclosure document so franchising if you're stagnant and you're just plodding along and it's the same old same old something's wrong in your business you need to really sit and go back and say listen there's something wrong here because things change, times change, people's needs change. I mean, we look at people now, we hardly have meetings anymore. We talk on, online, everything is going online. It pertains to your business as well. A lot of us in franchising have been doing that, never thought of social media marketing, and it's quite important to do that. You know, you mentioned something, um, and, and, and listening to other consultants in the industry, one thing that's very clear is almost that not every business is franchisable. So there's some people out there that, that say, oh, we're ready to franchise our business and they want to get on board and hop on board and I want to, I'm now ready. But yet when you look at what is it that you look for or what is it that helps you determine? Because as I've said, I've heard this before, not every business is franchisable. What is not franchisable? A business that's not franchisable is a business that is not dynamic and grows. It's a business that offers you basic services but you haven't thought it through. Uh, let's just take a chicken franchise. They're popping up left, right and center. I mean, we have, I think, probably about 80 different chicken brands and everybody thinks theirs is different. And it's not really true. The big boys really know how to differentiate from everybody else. But if you don't differentiate yourself, then you can't compete. So if you, for example, have a chicken franchise and you think that you have something different, what is the difference? You need to convince me that you can actually, you are differentiated and you have a unique product that is different 
if you don't have that and you're just plodding along, then you're just going to compete with everybody else and you're not going to get stand out in the market. And why franchise them? You might sell some franchises, but you won't dominate the market or won't get into the big market. Um, I was asked, for example, by a company in Cape Town, uh, they have uh, burger stores. They've got three burger stores. Now they want to franchise. So I asked a simple question. What makes you different than the others? Now, our burgers are cheaper. That's not a point. That's not a thing that's different. What are you using different types of meat? Are you offering, is your offering different? And then my answer is clearly you still have to think things through. But that's the nice thing about talking to me when we consult is that I can actually guide you. And sometimes I start with you, and sometimes it takes a year, two years, but I make you think about where you should go next stage until you're ready to franchise. And then I'm happy with when you're ready for franchising, then we franchise. But I like get your basics right. A lot of people don't have their basics right. Yes, it's all about the basics. And people often think that being the cheapest or the fastest is 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 what makes you different. And, and those are not normally what makes you different. It may be that you're bringing a certain, maybe you're bringing meat free, you know, that it doesn't have meat within your burgers. That could be what differentiates you from other chicken places. So that would be what would be different about you because nobody else is doing it. So that's what you've got to consider is, do I have something that nobody else is doing at this point in time? Yeah. The other thing that uh, simple basics, and it's, this is one question I always ask, have you trademarked your name? Have you trademarked your logo? Have you trademarked all your uh, taglines? What have you trademarked? And 90% of people that are new franchisors who want to franchise have no clue what I'm talking about. They don't understand what trademarking is. And then you get trademarking. Oh, that's going to cost me a lot of money. Do I really need it? Yes, you do. And when you do your trademark, make quite sure that you trademark with somebody that knows what they're doing. Don't get your around-the-corner lawyer to do it for you. It doesn't work because they don't do searches properly. They don't see if your trademark uh, is going to have issues. I have a current uh, franchisee that lost 6 million rand defending his trademark for one simple reason. They didn't do a proper search. Sure. So 6 million bucks to lose. So once again, coming back to basics, do your trademarks, do this, do your documentation right all of that sort of stuff get your basics in place and gosh where does the time go so yes uh one last question for you now what is it for you as to why are you a member of FASA and why do you recommend people being a member of FASA you know FASA is actually a brilliant organization um they actually help people to have structure. Because if you're FASA registered and you're going through FASA, there's a lot more trust. There's a lot of fly by night. Um, in the last couple of months now, I've seen two companies. They are selling franchises like crazy. And they sell, they've got 100 franchises going and it's, they're doing well. But they don't conform to anything. They don't conform to the CPA Act. They, their contracts are terrible. Uh, so many pitfalls in it, and they're not FISA registered. Now, if they were FISA registered, they would have had that information, uh, what to do and do the right thing and follow the right process. And the other thing that FISA does very well, it brings your uh, service providers and the people that need it together, plus your franchisees, because often your franchisees are at a loss and they're not quite sure what they've done wrong. Um, and they now having a dispute. And those disputes can be resolved through FASA because they're really good at helping these people to sort their story out. So being a FASA member, I think, is imperative if you're in franchising. 
Thank you, Robin. And that's all we've got time for today. I just want to let you know that if you'd like to get a hold of Robin, we will be popping a, a, his link in the comment box below. You can click on that link and send Robin a message to, to see uh, he's offering a free consultation to find out whether your business is viable, whether you have a business to franchise. So make use of that. It could be probably one of your most valuable hours. So I just want to remind everybody in closing that FASA is there, is an organization that's there to protect, lobby, promote, and develop ethical franchising across all sectors in South Africa with a specific focus on transformation. If you'd like to know more about FASA, you